This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Live from Beachview neighborhood in Pittsburgh, PA, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for the Indie Mayhem Show, show where we talk with indie wrestlers and people around indie wrestling, uh, people uh, involved, uh, myself a video producer uh, with IndieWrestling.us with a lot of local groups here in the Pittsburgh area. We're going to have a fun conversation tonight. And, of course, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can check out past episodes of the Indie Mayhem Show and everything else that's going on wrestling-related in our little podcast and video world on the Internet. You can drop us a line at GoodTimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 where you can let us know uh, any questions about any uh, announced guests coming up. Anybody you think we should have on the show, any comments about shows we've had in the past, anything else you want to tell us about indie wrestling, indie wrestling promotions or wrestlers that you think we should check out so we can know about them and and talk about them. And of course, you can uh, chat about all this stuff on our Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Subscribe to Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Please comment and subscribe on all of those platforms. And of course, video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page and live streams on the Facebook page um, that we announce as they get scheduled sometimes on the Tuesday nights with the Wrestling Mayhem Show, sometimes other times in the week. And you can become part of that, too, and ask questions and, and become part of the show that way. Um, so this week, we have a wonderful guest here. A, another we, we had Billy, uh, Billy Ruxpin, a, another first-year IWC student joining us. And we have another one this week um, with Katie Arquette joining us here in studio. How are you doing, Katie? Doing all right. How are you? All right. I can't wait to get into a, a, a lot of stuff, including some matches you have coming up at this point at, as of this recording, uh, as well as a little bit of what Katie Arquette is doing uh, this year. Uh, but first of all, we like to kind of break the ice a little bit. Oh, wait, wait. Chad the Shad's with us, too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and of course, Shad. producer Missy. Hi. Hanging out after the Mayhem show. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm around. Uh, I'm around. I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh first we have a little bit of a nice breaker here to get to know you before we get into the rest of the show um so what's your first memory of professional wrestling <laughs> my first memory of professional wrestling was when wwf was a thing and i walked into my older sister's room while she was watching it when she wasn't allowed because it's violent so i saw um, Kane walk out for the first time and fell madly in love. I don't know why. With Kane. With, With the, Kane. Mask at the time, right? Yes, mask, everything. Everything. I fell head over heels for Kane and I did not stop asking my sister questions. And she is eight years older than me, so she got annoyed <laughs> very quickly and decided to kick me out of her room. And I have stopped watching wrestling until it turned into WWE. <laughs> <laughs> so was she was she a big fan at the time? At, oh, at yeah. Time? So so she was she, I mean, a, a mild fan, like she would watch it when it came on, didn't follow it all the time, but she would mm-hmm. watch it. And of course, with closed doors, because my parents were like, no, you're not allowed to watch that. And then I would watch it and ask too many questions. And she's like, no, you're done. You're going to you're, 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 you were going to get her discovered at that point, right? Oh, yeah. I called her out for a lot of things. That was not one of them because I like to see Kane and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Those are my two favorites. They're still my two favorites. Awesome. So you're 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 an attitude era. Uh, oh, hell yeah. My so. sister bought me a poster and it was right above my bed. So before I went to sleep, I saw them. There was The Rock. I think Edge was on there, Chris Jericho, Kane. Um, I think Val Venus was on there. There was a lot of there was a lot of people. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. So so how did you go from there? You know, you got back into wrestling a little more later when you were allowed, I guess. It's yeah, a little calmer then too. So it was probably more allowable, right? Yeah. So, um, how did you go from? Uh, at what point did you did you say you know I want to get in there and I want I want my hand at this. Um, Well, a friend of mine started training and he wanted me to also train. And I said, no, I don't think I'd be able to. Not something I'd really want to do. 
But after I thought about it for a while, I've, as for as long as I can remember growing up, I've wanted to do something physical, either it be MMA or karate or a self-defense class, whatever. So I thought to myself, well, this is an opportunity to do so. Mm-hmm. And I am 19, so I'm technically an adult. <laughs> so I said, I can do this. I can't be told not to. So mm-hmm. I decided to get in the ring. And I thought my child went pretty well, and I was pretty pretty damn proud of myself and i loved it ever since awesome and this was not with like iwc's training school this mm-hmm. is this is well before right or uh, this was with iwc's this was okay with IWC. sorry flipped it. yeah so so how was that like was it really kind of surprising when you got into it or what do you mean like as far as everything that goes into training for, for wrestling um a little bit of both like mm. i i had no idea what to expect i had no idea what to expect from a tryout i'm thinking i'm gonna be like military run around the facility a hundred times and then be expected to do a bunch of cardio death drills and but no that's not exactly what happened a few Mm. cardio things but um the training process altogether was it was great i it was taken step by step and the best explanation for every single thing we did in the ring anyone who can explain a simple front roll with every single detail, he did it perfectly. Mm-hmm. So, um, but everything was real simple, real easy. And then, of course, there were it had to it had its challenges. But I, we all muscled through it, and it was it was great. That's awesome. Um, you, you mentioned like kind of kind of coming up through the attitude area and and, and everything. Was was women's wrestling really inspirational at the time uh, for you? I know there's a lot of ups and downs with the divas and everything like that. So, <laughs> um, well, whenever I was younger, there weren't a lot of mm-hmm. like you didn't see them. They were on there for sixty seconds or less, and I fell in love with Lita as well when she did her moon salt off the top rope. But um, when I got back into wrestling, the women's wrestling it was. Granted, I was still a fan at the time, but now watching it and analyzing it, like it, it could be so much better. It, it really could. Like they do such a great job, but watching it from a a wrestler's perspective than a fan's perspective, you pinpoint every single thing. And don't get me wrong, I think there could re- women's wrestlers could have way more time like the men do. I mean, there's only one or two matches on either Raw or SmackDown every week. So we could have a little bit more time. But um, no, it really wasn't that influential for me, the women's wrestlers, the the characters for sure. But mm-hmm. overall, what they did didn't inspire me, especially the divas. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that they were even called divas aggravated me in a stupid butterfly belt. What is that? No. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, the character K- Katie Arquette, and and I think I think that I, I'm I'm understanding where it's coming from with the character because I I've seen women's wrestling. There's a lot of just women that wrestle, and especially in the indies, right? And you came out with something a bit more uh, when you you debuted in February of this year, I believe. Right? Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you know that kind of came to be. Well, there was a lot of talk of what my character should be, but um, and, and tell the people that, that the, the uninformed about what, what is Katie Arquette about? Okay, well, Katie Arquette is this badass actress who, um, in Hollywood, she was always looked at as second best. She was mm-hmm. always that stunt double because she had the athleticism and the body, and she could do all these things that were second best. Well, she got sick and tired of being second best and wanted to. Sh- let all of her anger out somewhere where she was allowed to do so. So she just decided to go into a ring and kick every woman and man's ass that she could and is going to make the most of it. So, awesome. so, so coming straight in with a, with a chip on her shoulder and a reason to be there. Oh, hell yeah. That's, That's why awesome. she called out Bert Baker on her debut. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And, and so, so how did that kind of idea come across? Um, Well, I was a theater major in school, and I've always acted. I've always loved to be on stage, and the ring is actually my favorite stage, fun fact. And it kind of just fell into place. We were playing um, with a 
a thespian character and then it switched into a lesbian thespian. <laughs> you can only imagine who could have came up with that idea. Uh, I don't know. On that oh, class. No. no idea. No, no. <laughs> uh, so it turned into that. But then I thought, no, it goes right back to the butterfly belt and the divas. It just takes advantage of a yes, yeah, sex sells, but women specifically. So mm-hmm. I decided to change a little more and make her a little more savage and give her that opportunity to just beat people up and be strong and of course very preppy and whatnot but still she has a backbone that's awesome that's awesome so you're a few months into it so far and we got to talk about you got a pretty big match coming up here um i don't know too many people in their first year um within their first year being put into a, a pretty high profile cage match as coming up, you're taking on. <laughs> yeah. You get the expression here. So, so I was surprised <laughs> that you came out and challenged the new IWC Women's Champion, Lufisto. And if you don't know who Lufisto is, look her up. I'm sure there's a lot on YouTube, and and it's interesting and and intimidating. Um, so, to say the least, <laughs> intimidating. <laughs> like I didn't know some of the things. Like she th- apparently she won Cage of Death or something like that and and uh so yeah she's she's kind of the real deal so you have a cage match with her in a couple of weeks <laughs> i do next week next actually. week as of this recording yes mm-hmm. next saturday um i'm excited mm-hmm. i mean a cage match is it's a cage match you can't really prepare for it other than the experience you've had over a certain number of months or years and in my case, I have months for me working, um, but I'm excited. You can't plan a cage match, like pr- prepping, like I said, for it, but it's got to happen at some point, and you got to just be alert, be aware, and take everything that you've learned so far and make use of it and take advantage of it and do everything you can the best way that you can. And see, there's not like cage match day in, in, in training school, right? No, there's not. <laughs> it's, it's one of those where, oh, you've never taken this? We're going to do it live in the ring. <laughs> and you just got to just go with it. That's awesome. And as like I said, a pretty a pretty big, jeez, uh, uh, I mean, it's one of the big, like, three or four shows of the year for IWC, too. Yeah. So um, your, your first, uh, you know, again, being um, so early in, you, we talked about you, you were actually working with a lot of different promotions at this point, too, like as far as Toledo yes. even, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, talk a little bit about that experience, like, you know, uh, getting out there in, in different promotions, uh, even outside of IWC. Um, it, it's exciting because a lot of times you hear for men specifically, because there's not a lot of women in this business, um, you have to contact the promoters and send emails and send pictures and videos and whatnot. For me, I had everyone that I work for now contact me other than IWC because I trained there and whatnot. But everywhere else has contacted me and I've sent everything in and working with them. They're all different because there's different locker room types such as family or you know you're very on your own but overall the places that I've been brought into are very nice very kind and uh any typical wrestling locker room um but it's all a great experience because there's different rings there's different people there's different wrestling styles and you kind of just have to morph yourself into it and get to know everyone the best you can and be respectful and do your damn best when you get out there it's awesome that's awesome. Um, just checking real quick. We got a lot of people in the chat. Uh, Daniel Duke uh, and a few others hanging out here. Um, I think you answered for the most part. Lita being a a a, a uh, inspiration of sorts, right? Who? Uh, there, somebody was asking about Lita being an inspiration. Oh, hell so. yeah. So. Plus, she's really, really hot. So she was definitely an inspiration to me <laughs> when she would do a moonsault too, and the thong just hangs out. Yeah. <laughs> there you go um oh oh she okay sorry I'm, I'm clarifying the question right now i said ask if you can ask who your influences are because lita was mentioned earlier anybody else that kind of uh, uh stuck out to you um well like i said kane and stone cold i mm. i liked kane because he he was a man of zero to very little words and his size and his aggression showed through which i really liked stone cold he He could say anything to anyone about anything and he could get away with it. So two very different styles and they both worked and got over tremendously. Um, I really like The Rock. 
Um, he he was great on the mic. He had the body for it, and a lot of the things he did, I enjoyed. Um, like I said, I really liked Lita because she went out there and did her thing. And I, Edge, I really liked Edge. His spear is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a thumbs up from the number one Edge fan, <laughs> Chad, over here. I think we were just talking about how many Edge toys he he or figures he has, right? So it's the closest <laughs> I will ever get to having my own action figure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, all right. Well, hey. So what you know, this far in a few months, what is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? Ooh, tough one. Um. I think the worst thing, I mean, not maybe not the worst, but the first thing that I can think of is uh, uh, the locker rooms can be just like high school or middle school. They're definitely clicky. You have certain people that you like to hang out with. There's always smack being talked about and you have to take it with a grain of salt, whether it's true or not. And depending on how much of an adult you are and decide who to listen to and who not to listen to and just do things the way that you can. That's probably the worst part. The best part is the criticism and the feedback because being so new, it, I, I love it. I love being told that sucked. And I love being told that was all right. Could have mm-hmm. been better, but you know, it's all right. Um, because it helps me grow and it also helps them grow because they've gone from student to teacher. Absolutely. We, we, were, t- we were having a good conversation earlier. We, we were talking about like breaking down wrestling and watching wrestling. And you talked about how like you would have a match and be told that was really good, but boom, 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 boom. This this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Like, yeah. you know, like talk a little bit about that experience too. Um, it's bittersweet mm-hmm. because um, watching it as a fan is like, oh wow, that was awesome, and then watching it as a professional, it's like, oh no, that was wrong. That was wrong. So being told like, I loved this, I loved this, and I loved this, and it's like. Now you need to fix this and this and this, and it's just a much longer list. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's, it can be harsh depending on how it's delivered and who is saying it specifically, because if you're close to someone and they're telling you that that was really bad, it it rubs the wrong way. But at the same time, it's like, you know what? I'm going to do better. That's all I can do. I'm going to work on it. And Mm -hmm. every time I get in the ring, I'll just do better. And you're in the first year so. Yeah, I think I have a good I have a good excuse. <laughs> so like, well, I'll I'll do better. <laughs> That's for year two. Yes. <laughs> That's for year two. Like, damn it. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm backtracking on some uh, questions here. We have an interesting one from Daniel. Um, how do you stay so beautiful and dangerous at the same time in the ring? <laughs> and the blush question. Proven. Um. Well. Uh, I don't know. I can't answer that. I, that's not really a question I can answer. But thank <laughs> you. I'm very flattered with that comment. All right. Well, I'm waiting for this other question to come up. Uh, one of our other standards. What? what? Have you have the question. I, I don't know. It didn't pop up on my Facebook well, for some I reason. I also put it over into your G chat. Okay. Um, if you could be in the ring with any women's wrestler, past or present, who would it be? Oh really good question um bailey i'd be in the ring with bailey she seems like she'd be really fun to work with her selling is fantastic her execution is it's really good it's believable and it makes sense her psychology about it makes a lot of sense i think i'd have a lot of fun Going in with Bailey, especially with my character being the way that she is, like, don't hug me, get off of me, don't touch me, <laughs> type of attitude. So definitely Bailey. Awesome. Uh, we didn't mention you. You have a pretty interesting uh, uh, team up with Calvin Couture as well. Yes. It's been a lot of fun to watch over the, la- the past few months. Can you t- tell me a little bit about that? Well. It's been fun. It's been interesting. And, and Calvin is scheduled to be on here in the next month as well. Yes. So. Yes, he is. Um, It's been a lot of fun, especially to be matched up with him. We train together. We work together. We've grown really close and have a good friendship together. So it works well because we have a good chemistry. So we know like what to say and how to like finish each other's sentences and whatnot. And Mm -hmm. like like in the ring specifically. So it it works like we work and you don't get that very often, especially with people you train with. So 
absolutely another question how do you um how do you get everybody to boo you because you're so charismatic <laughs> um i say things that i wouldn't once said to me uh there was one mm. Just real quick, there was one promotion that I was at, and you know when a heel talks, everyone's booing, no one wants to listen, they want to interrupt and whatnot. Well, there were these four little girls sitting in the front row up in Erie, and they were like all for it, and they're like, boo, you suck, we hate you, this and that, and I was like, what is the one thing I could possibly say that would offend them so much and everyone else in this room? And it clicked. And I said, you four are the ugliest little girls I have ever seen. And everyone shut up real quick after they got done booing. It worked. Nice. And granted, I that wasn't my idea. I did get that from someone. But they said one ugly little girl and they whispered it to her. I said it to four in front of everyone. So I'm not taking full <laughs> credit. I'm taking partial credit for that. Awesome. <laughs> you took a concept and ran with it. <laughs> yes, I took a concept and ran with it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, I, and those eerie crowds are, uh, we've been to one or two shows up there and they're pretty rowdy and fun. Well, so. I, was, I was thinking of the other show that we were at um, where, when they were up north, IWC. Clearfield or Not Rural Clearfield, Valley? Rural Valley. Okay. Um, that show was kind of interesting too because kind of a similar situation. You had a lot of a lot of heat going in on that too and the crowd didn't like you. No, they did not <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> so here's here's a question that I have. You're a very likable, approachable, nice, nice person. Oh. <laughs> so what's it like to be a completely different person in the ring? Well, um, it's different. It's it can be challenging because thank you for what you said. I, I like to try to be a nice person and be nice to people. Um, but I try to I try to I try to channel um emotions and feelings towards um other people um into my character. So whenever I don't like something to the smallest effect, I, I heighten it and I make it times infinity and just run with it and like I said say things that I wouldn't want said to me and act the way that I wouldn't want someone to act towards me so awesome awesome um <laughs> one last question uh who are you watching these days is there anything uh either indies or or on the on tv that really um you're paying attention to it can be um other other wrestlers or or promotions in general that kind of have your attention these days um, I started watching Lucha Underground a little bit because I like that style. I mm. like how smooth and crisp and just, it just flows really, really well together. And I know DJ Z has come in and helped train and whatnot. And he, um, he's great. And the things that he's taught me along with others, it just, it moves smoothly and the way that he does it and, uh, execute executes it. it it's really fun style to learn and it's um it's different so you have technical and like not robotic but very specific and then you have lucha where it's it's flowy and it, it just it's like chain you don't need to speak about it it just goes it works you don't need to call well we're gonna do this next no no no. it just you know what's gonna happen next that's awesome that's awesome. I have an interesting. We can have a good conversation about the lucha style and everything. Because again, watching like 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 him talking about like DJ Z talking about like how that's changed and it fit like his uh, his re recent injury and everything like that. You know, mm -hmm. so it's 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 been really interesting to hear about. So all right. Um, on that note, where can people find you online? <laughs> people can find me online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the real Katie Arquette or the Katie Arquette. Um, but Twitter, there's only one T cause I ran out of character space. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's where you can find me. And of course you're a big part of what's that? You got a question over yeah, Oh, we got I, one last question here from Chad. I have a question. Yeah. It's, uh, what's your favorite move that you do not perform? Moonsault. I want to learn so bad, but I haven't yet. And it looks really cool. I want to do it. I like to fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. There you go. Go with the go with the lucha stuff, right? And Hell of, yeah! <laughs> and of course, you're a big part of the international wrestling cartel at wcwrestling.com to see when you're coming up on a card, including Cage Fury coming up here very soon uh, with Lufisto. Um, but what other general places are you are you working that people can find you? 
Um, I'm working in parts of Ohio, West Virginia, Erie, and Toledo awesome. right now. So. so there you go. Look for a KDR kit on the card there. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Indie Mayhem Show and the Wrestling Mayhem Show as well. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I had a fun time. Awesome. Uh, and thank you guys for joining us. Chad the Shad hanging out. Producer Missy as well. And everybody in the chat room here. Again, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Especially follow us on Facebook so you can see when these uh, live streams are coming up here. Um, Tuesday nights and other times during the week as we get these interviews. We're doing a lot of them. And a lot of them as much as possible in studio now that we have this awesome place to be doing it. Please support the show. Literally help and keep the lights on here with Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Or at least spread the love if you like these conversations. If you like the people on these conversations, um, the, the guests, uh, don't worry about me. The, the guests is what I'm worried about. Get them out there. Uh, please share the show with anybody that uh, you think would be into it. And uh, rate and comment on iTunes. So thank you so much to our guests. Thank you to everybody in the chat room. And until next time, please support and be well. Sick, 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 you know how I act now If you got a problem, come and see it from a back down Act wow, steady sip and check This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com